Hi, we're going to have a go at creating an Excel bubble chart. Here's my data, ice cream sales, I'm looking at the relationship between temperature, uh, average units sold and average revenue. Um, I want to know for a particular temperature on average how many units of ice cream sold, but I also want to know the average revenue for that temperature. So uh, just because I sell more ice creams doesn't mean I make more money. So I just want to look at the distinction between those two series of data. Now, um, bubble charts are a bit like uh, scatter graphs. If I just show you what a scatter graph would look like from this data, if I select those two series, a scatter graph can plot two numeric series on one graph. You can see what it would produce. It would look like this. So it shows me the relationship between temperature and units sold. So in general, the trend is that as the temperature rises, the number of units sold rises as well. But this doesn't tell me um, the revenue for a particular temperature. So that's when a bubble graph will become quite useful. So I'm just going to get rid of that and I'm going to click into my data. And instead of the scatter graph, I'm going to go for the bubble. Now you can see that it's in the same group of charts as a scatter graph. I'm just going to go for bubble and it looks a bit like this. And it's a bit of a mess at the moment, but hopefully you can see that you have different sized bubbles. And the bubble data is coming from this column. Just to prove that, if I click on select data and then edit this series, you can see we've got our x axis, our y axis, that's from A and B, and then our bubble uh, series is coming from column C. Now, actually, while we're here, I would actually like my temperatures to be on the vertical axis. So I'm just going to swap around these two series, just because I think that makes more sense, having the temperature on the vertical axis. OK, so I might, just to make this a little bit clearer, I could change my axis settings. So I've clicked on the axis down here, I'm going to click on axis options here, and I'm going to say my lowest will be 200, and then for my vertical axis, I could say the lowest was 10. Okay, so that's given me a little bit more space, maybe I could reduce the maximum here as well, let's change that to 1500. Okay, now, um, made it a little bit clearer, but you could make it clearer still. If I select those bubbles, in my format data series, I've got a little option here that says size represents area of bubbles, or just the width of the bubbles. And that gives a little bit more differentiation between the smallest and the largest. I can also choose how to scale the bubbles, lower the number, the smaller the scaling, in which because there was so much overlapping, that's actually quite useful. So what does that tell me? Well, it shows me, as the scatter graph did, that there is a correlation between number of units sold and the rise in temperature. But that doesn't actually mean that I make more money the higher the temperature is. It looks as though that around this temperature, although people don't buy as many ice creams as up here in the 30s, they do actually spend more money on their ice creams. So that's the actual difference. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is just a little bit of fun. I'm going to actually replace these bubbles with pictures of ice creams. So we're going to go up to Insert and Online Pictures. And I'm going to search for um, ice cream. Let's go for this chubby here. Insert. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to cut it actually. Select my bubbles and paste in. And there we are. Just for a bit of fun, we've now got happy little pictures of smiley faces with ice creams. Now I'm going to move that to a new sheet. Sign tab, move chart, new sheet, just to show. Uh, the data a little bit clearer. Okay, hopefully that was helpful.